places for our resident pastors and all the ministry gifts that are here. Those that are not here that are serving abroad, amen. Uh, I asked Apostle Talton earlier, do you know what today is? Amen. But she don't know. But that's okay. Don't tell. Don't tell. Amen. She don't know what today is. But this month is Mental Health Awareness Amen. Uh, month. Amen. Amen. And uh, I, I am so blessed. God has really blessed me. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, one of our members called and uh, connected me with this great woman of God. Amen. And she said, you're welcome. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and she sent me the contact and she said, you're welcome. <laughs> Amen. And I didn't know then what I know now. Yes. Uh, but what a phenomenal uh, woman of God that she is. Yes. And then what an impact that she makes in the community from a mental health capacity. Amen. She is the founder and I believe president of the Haven of Life Learning Center. School of Mental Health. That's what I that said, the Haven of Life, of Light School of Mental Health. Amen. Amen. But, but she's so much more than that. Amen. And uh, she has consented to come and minister to us on this morning. Amen. 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 So I'm going to yield the floor at this time and ask you to receive with me Dr. Lena Chapman. Amen. 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 today, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let me decrease as you increase, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Let only you speak through me, oh God. I'm just a willing vessel, Lord. Lord, I just ask, oh God, that something that is said will prick the heart, oh God, will touch the mind, oh God, will give some comfort and possibly some motivation, oh God, to keep going. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I'm like, well, did you want me to speak about mental health? Like, what do you want me to talk about? And he was like, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. And yes. I'm like, okay. Um, so usually when I come here, I will talk about like a topic like grief or depression or trauma and things like that. And so as I've been um, studying and reading, God has on me, the, God has put on me this journey that I've been on. I'm just going to call it a journey because it's so personal. I just don't want to say it out loud. But he's been putting me on this journey. And as I've been reading and really uh, seeking God um, in this season, he's given me some things, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I want to talk about today, I want to talk about the psychology of having favor and anointing in your life. Mm -hmm. The psychology of having favor and anointing in your life. And so you're probably thinking like, okay, you know, What's that mean, right? Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes, I think that as we are anointed, appointed, as we are 
going through things, as we become elevated, as we, you know, go through this journey in life as saints. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the good, we have the bad, we got the in-between, we got the, I don't know what's happening. Right. We have all those different things, and all of that plays a part in your mind. Yeah. It does. Being yeah. saved yeah. isn't just a spiritual thing. Yeah. It definitely yeah. affects your soul. Yeah. It affects your mind, all those different things. It's just not the spirit. It's your soul, it's your body. All those right. things are affected, and so I want to talk about the psychology of having favor and anointing in your life, and so... I want to ask you a question of have you ever had favor in your life? Yes. 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 How did it feel to have favor? Great. 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 <laughs> yes, absolutely. It was just like, whoa, yes. thank God. I got a blessing. And then it was like, yes. ooh, another open door. Okay. okay. I didn't deserve that. Ooh, another right. open door. All right, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. And so you get excited and you get very, um, you know, you worship, you praise God, you thank him, you get just uplifted, you just feel good, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But there is a psychology to this, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And so what I'm going to start with is the definition of favor. So what is favor? Favor is the approval, the support, or liking for someone or something. And biblically speaking, favor is God's acceptance, goodwill, and his uh, preference and treatment and stepping in your situation, yeah. okay? Yeah. But we all know that yeah. we don't technically earn favor. That's right. Right. That's right. We can check off every box in the life and still, still yeah. not earn favor. And then you have people who don't check off any of the boxes and right. they still, still get favor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just look at people who, you know, the celebrities and things like that. 15 cars, uh, 13 car garage, and big houses and money just blowing it all over the place and not even caring about yeah, right. waking up and just saying, Lord, I thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you got people who say, Lord, I thank you every day. And they sacrifice and they go and go and go. And things just keep happening in their lives. So favor is not on. There's nothing technically that is a, a formula for favor. Right. But we know that we must do what we need to do. Right? Still, regardless. And so well, who I want to talk about when we talk about favor is David. Okay. Mm -hmm. David. And so in 1 Samuel 16 and 12, it reads, the Lord told Samuel, this is he, um, the Lord told Samuel, this is he which I have anointed. This is he which I have anointed. And obviously we know the story of David. We know how he became king, right? Mm -hmm. So Saul and messed up. Time after time again, and God was like, look, um, I'm done. I'm done. We're mm -hmm. done with this. Mm -hmm. And so in chapter 16, 1 Samuel 16, Samuel goes through this process of, uh, the end of 15, he goes through, through this process of grieving, mourning, Saul, right? Mm -hmm. And then God was like, all right, I gave you some time. Right. It's time to get back up, and we got to keep this thing going, right. all right? Mm -hmm. And so obviously Samuel um, is sent to Jesse's house, which is David's dad. And so he sent to the house, and he said, okay, I want you to pull in all your sons. Mm -hmm. I've got to anoint somebody here today, right? And so, mm -hmm. you know, he has the thing. He's pouring oil. Ain't nothing pouring out. And then he goes to the next one, the next one, next one. And then none of the oil is pouring out. Pouring out. Mm -hmm. And Samuel was like, I'm confused. Mm -hmm. I know you're sitting here and you're saying these are all your sons. Mm -hmm. What's happening here? And so, obviously, you know, he asked, are you sure that's everybody? Mm -hmm. And he was like, well. <laughs> I got this kid out there in the field, and I mean, he's the youngest. I mean, we don't really, I mean, he be out there doing his thing. We kind of, you know, do our thing over here. He do his thing over here. But, and he was like, go get him. Go get him. And David walks in. And I can imagine if he was in the fields, he probably didn't smell very good. You know, all sweaty, you know, you know, all that stuff. And so Samuel gets the oil, and the oil begins to pour. And at that point, it was, um, and again, 1 Samuel uh, 16 to 12, and it says, he sent him and brought him in. Mm -hmm. And now he was ruddy and uh, with all of beautiful contents mm -hmm. and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. Mm -hmm. David didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the oldest. He wasn't the one who's getting the inheritance. He wasn't whatever. He didn't do anything. It was just God was appointed. Right? And so as you know, we read and we continue to read how, okay, David was um, that and then um, 
which is really weird because he was in the fields, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you're in the field, you don't have a lot of people around you. So he's playing the harp in the field, just doing his own thing. And somehow, because the evil spirit came upon Saul, his people were like, hey, mm -hmm. hey, you probably need someone to play the harp mm -hmm. out of all the instruments right. to be played, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then they mention there is a child or kid or whatever you want to call it who plays the harp. Out of all the people in Israel mm -hmm. who played harp, right. they chose David. Right. 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 Out of all people, right. David. So he went from the field mm -hmm. to playing the harp for the king. Mm -hmm. And from playing the harp from the king, he became his armor bearer, mm -hmm. which is a very important job. Yes. And from his armor bearer, he became, um, um, he became, he, from being an armor bearer, he then became, um, um, he then killed Goliath, right? Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And so when you think about this, I can imagine from one point, I'm just out here in the fields, mm -hmm. tending the sheep, mm -hmm. to, okay, now this prophet is anointing me, mm -hmm. to now, after that, I'm going to the king's house to play the harp, right. and now I'm his armor bearer. Mm -hmm. What is that about, right? right? Mm -hmm. But in the midst of the elevation and the favor on his life, David continued to do what he was already doing. So even when he was in the king's palace, he still went back home to make sure the sheep was okay. Right, right. In the midst of all of those different things, he still obeyed his father. He still submitted to his father when his father said, hey, it's a war going on. Here, here's some food or whatever like that. Take it to your brothers. He didn't say, you know what? I'm the king's armor bearer, and you're going to have right. somebody else to do it. Right, right. 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 He still remained humble in his yeah. heart. Amen. And as he went through all those things, and, and even being misunderstood by his brothers, when he went out there to feed them, and he said, "What, what's going on? Oh, you know, this big Goliath is coming, and we scared this and that. What are y'all scared of? Right, 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 right. And they thought he was being cocky. Mm -hmm. They looked at him like, why are you even out here? Right. You need to be back there tending the sheep. You don't know nothing about no war. Right. Mm -hmm. But David wasn't being cocky. He was being confident because he mm -hmm. built that relationship with God while he was out there in the field. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And so how does it feel to be misunderstood and to be overlooked? My God. But then the favor of God is still on your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But you're still humble. Yes. Amen. All right. And so after all of those different things that happened, he wasn't prideful. After he killed Goliath, he didn't say, Look what I did. Look, right. hey, look at me. Right. He was still humble. And then people began to sing his praises. Mm -hmm. Saul killed his thousands. Mm -hmm. David killed his <laughs> ten thousands, right? Yeah. He still didn't let it get to his head, but it got to somebody's head. And who was that? Saul. Saul. Absolutely. And so Saul wanted to kill him. Yeah. The one who once praised him, loved him, honored him, mm -hmm. yeah. wanted to kill him mm -hmm. because of the favor yeah. on his yeah. life. That's good. Right. Yeah. So there is a psychology of favor here. Yeah. 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 How would it feel? Have you ever had favor and then you started seeing people be jealous? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. You get a building, you, you get um, a new car, you get a house, you get yeah. you get um, um, an open door on your job. Maybe you didn't have the education or the training, but they just elevated you yeah. anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you, why she get it? Why he get it? What, what kind of credit she got? How they get another building? They can't even afford the first one. What's going on? People begin to talk because of the favor. And let's not, let's just be real. When people talk about you, what does it do? It hurts. It hurts. Yeah. It definitely hurts. Yeah. And sometimes, depending on how much favor you get, more people will talk about you. Yeah. True. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then people begin to plot against yeah. you. Yes. 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 They begin Preaching to plot good. against you. Yes. And that is psychology here. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, even though we know it's the favor of God and there is nothing that we necessarily did to earn right. it, That's right. people become jealous and they will want to hurt you. Yeah. And then that will take you to a place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as we read about David, it, take, it took him to a place. Mm -hmm. It definitely took him to a place. And the psychology, again, of uh, uh, favor is the part where I didn't ask for this stuff. Right. 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 Right.
deserve this. I, I didn't ask for it. Right. And I definitely didn't ask for you to hate me. Right. Mm -hmm. But now exactly. here we are. Yeah. Here we are. And I bet he was probably thinking in the midst of this, like, okay, so I was your armor bearer. You put me as the captain mm -hmm. over your your army. Mm -hmm. And now you want to kill me. Right. <laughs> and then you trying to be real sneaky with it. Because you're trying to make it look real nice and say, I want you to marry my daughter because mm -hmm. I want you to be my son-in-law. Mm -hmm. But the real plot was Saul was really trying to uh, vex him into, because something was uh, going on with his daughter, and he really was trying to tear him down by doing that, even though it looked like a gift. Mm -hmm. Had never received a gift from someone that looks like, oh, that was really nice and that, but truly it was something behind it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's the psychology of the favor of the anointing. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. And David, it says in multiple scriptures here in 1 Samuel that David had to be wise on how he moved. Yeah. Right. He had to be wise on what he said. He had to be strategic. Mm -hmm. Can you mind, can you imagine the mental capacity, and I know you've gone through this, of when you do have favor, being careful what you say and how you say it around whatever people because you have to be careful of what mm -hmm. is going on because yeah. mm -hmm. you know their hearts. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And that hurts. Yeah, yeah. man. And so as David was going on and on and on, because of the favor on his life, because of the favor on his life, he had to become an outcast. Mm. He ran from Saul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was running for his life. Yeah. He actually had to hide his own family. So uproot his family from where they stayed and move into somewhere else because he was afraid that Saul couldn't get him, so he was going to get his family. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He dwells in caves when he used to have a bed in the king's house. All right. Mm -hmm. Now he dwells in caves. Jesus. And he's running from place to place to place to place. But even in the midst of the turmoil in the mind, and I, I would even call it a little bit of depression here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine having to run and to be careful and to watch your back all the time yeah. and looking over your shoulder because yeah. somebody's after you because you got some favor that you didn't ask for? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And then at some point, you probably like, God, Thank you for the favor. I thank you for the uh, new heart and the position right. and things yeah. like that and the elevation that I thank you for. But this cost me some mm -hmm. stuff. Yes. I don't like it. Right. Yeah. 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 It don't feel good. Yeah. Right. And so he had to walk on eggshells. He had to leave again his home. He had to hide. He had to um, even act a little crazy to get out of some situations mm -hmm. with some people. He really did. Mm -hmm. And so after all of that, in the midst of all of that, God still showed him love. Amen. He wasn't in those caves alone. Amen. He actually had 400 men with him. Mm -hmm. wow. And those 400 men, as the uh, word says, they had um, a lot of issues. Um, in 1 Samuel 22 and 2, it says, and everyone was in distress. So all his 400 men that he had, they were in distress. And everyone uh, was in debt. And everyone was in a discontent spirit and gathered themselves unto David. And he became their captain over them. And there were with him about 400 mm -hmm. men. Mm -hmm. In his despair, in his heartbreak, in his hurt and his pain, he still had a job to do. Yeah. Have you ever had to still minister, still continue the work yes. and support people even when you don't feel like it? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the psychology of the favor and the anointing. Mm -hmm. I cannot imagine somebody wanting to kill me and I'm running daily and I have to watch out off my back all the time mm -hmm. and things like that. And I still had to support 400 people. Right. right. Yeah. I still had to wake up and make sure my kids were okay. Mm -hmm. I still had to go on that job where people were looking at me crazy. Right. I still had to go to that church or that uh, organization where I know people were whispering about me right. or whatever like yeah. that. And I still had to show up with a smile yeah. 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 because of the favor and the anointing. Yes. Right. That's the psychology of it. Yes. Yes. We look at favor and say, yes, it feels good because everybody said it the first right. time. It feels mm -hmm. good to have favor. Right. And then you remember it oh, all. Right. I forgot that <laughs> my sister stopped talking to me because of it. I forgot that, you know, how I felt when I got those phone calls where people were saying that you didn't deserve it, things like that. It made me feel like, okay, am I smart enough? Can I really do this? Yeah, preaching I forgot good. about all of that. Yeah. Right. And that can tear you down. Yes. If you allow it to. Yes. It can tear you down. It can wear you out to the point where you even start questioning God. Lord, just take the car. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just, just take the position, take the all that. Okay, I mean, I was cool when I was like right there. I was barely right. making it speak, but hey, I didn't have all these problems. Right. Because the people who I thought were friends were not my friends. And the home I used to stay in, I can't even stay there no more. And it not only affects me, it affects my family. Yeah. But the favor and the anointing yeah. that you are called to, the call and the ministry and all those different things, it's worth it. It's worth it. And so as David continued to go on, he definitely prayed. He never stopped seeking God. He never stopped. Everywhere he went, Lord, should I go? Are you with me? Are we going to conquer it? Should I not go? What's going on? He still continued to ask God. He continued that relationship with him. He continued to minister. He continued to have his influence on people. He continued. All while watching his dad. And one thing about the anointing is when you have the opportunity to get back at somebody, <laughs> you don't. Oh, help yeah. us. You don't. Yeah. Help us. You don't. Amen. When Saul was Amen. in that cage, yeah. and I do believe he was sleeping, mm -hmm. and David said, Ooh, Ooh. 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 I bet this time he was like, I'm so sick of you. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm about to get him. Yeah. I'm going to kick him or something. I may not be able to kill him, but let me kick him or something. Let me pull his beard or cut, put a ball spot in his head. Right. <laughs> you know. Amen. And all he did was cut, cut, uh, cut the hem of his garment yes. and backed up. Yes. Yes. And then talked to Saul and said, "I have the opportunity yes. to kill you. I have the opportunity to take you out of here. Yes. But I respect you." And it wasn't through David's will only. It was because of the anointing yes. that was in his life. Yes. And he had the opportunity to do it. He had 400 yes. men. Yes. He, why was he running? I mean, he could have, I mean, because David was a man of war, so he was very strategic. He yes. knew how to fight. Mm -hmm. So he literally could have been like, all right, Saul, so let's end this today. Meet me right here in the valley over here, and let's get it. <laughs> and then whoever wins is in it, it's a done deal. Uh -huh. He could have, but he didn't. Yes. Because even in the spaces where people were talking about him, he still honored them. Amen. Yes. That's the anointing. Because, you know, when you tell your friends about stuff like that, yeah, because she's talking about me, this and that, blah, 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 blah. Girl, you better say something back. Mm -hmm. You better do this and that. Mm -hmm. Girl, if I was you, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. yes. But he still said, Lord, yes. because your spirit lives in me, yes. I'm going to even honor the people who are hurting me. Yes, I'm going to still honor the people who are hating on me. I'm going to still honor those people, even though they're hurting me. That's good. The psychology of the favor and the anointing. Mm -hmm. And so as we are living today, mm -hmm. as we go through today, as things happen, the wonderful things in our life, and even though it may be attached to some things we don't really want to go through, mm -hmm. is to prepare us. Amen. God is going to bless us and keep us and we always pray for the blessings and things like that but obviously every blessing got a cost to it yes you get a blessing with a new car you gotta have to make sure you pay that note that's right <laughs> okay that's right. you get a new position that means you have to rise up to the occasion yes. that's right. that means you there's more responsibility there's more yes. that you have yes. to rise to the occasion Amen. so with every blessing there's going to be a cost to it yes Lord. and it may drain you mentally spiritually and emotionally it may be physical. Mm -hmm. But you have the strength to endure because it's taking you to another level where God really wants you to be. Because David knew that he was anointed to be king. Can you imagine somebody said, you're anointed to be the president of this company. Mm -hmm. It's got, and you got it. But you still have to be sitting at your desk in the cubicle and stuff like that because it wasn't your time yet. Yes. Right, yes. right, yes. right. Yes. Have you ever got a prophecy that you were going to do something, things like that, and you were like, oh, thank you, Lord, and then a year went by? <laughs> right. And then two years went by. And then three, and you're like, was that my prophet? What's going on? <laughs> they say it. Right. But he waited. He endured. And even in his enduring, God still protected him. He kept him. He fed him. He blessed him. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
because he knew he needed him to be king. Mm -hmm. He knew he needed him to be, be king because of the prophecy that will be fulfilled years and years and years and decades and decades and years later yes. for Jesus to come on the scene to save us all. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. So when you have favor upon your life and be anointed, it will cost you something. Yes. It will make your mind go to different places and it may even <laughs> have you questioning God mm -hmm. and even question your own being in a sense like, okay, this is too much now. Yeah. Like, I like this stuff, but I don't want that stuff to come right. with it. Yeah. But God is yeah. saying, I'm shaping you, I'm molding you. Yeah. I'm sharpening you because when you do get up there to be king, you're going to have to be strong. Because yeah. mm -hmm. people going to talk about you when you can't. Right, right, right. When you're the leader, mm -hmm. People are going to talk about you. Yeah. I would have did it this way. I don't know. Yeah. I would have said it like that yeah. if I was them. Yeah. But they don't see what you see. Amen. Amen. And it's hard to lead and make mistakes when everyone is watching. watching. It's easy yes. to be in the background yeah. and yeah. say what people can do, but when you're in the front and you actually have yes. to make the decisions, right. yes. he was strengthening David. Yes. He was strengthening David. And when you do get discouraged, check your resume. Mm -hmm. Check your resume. Yes. What does that mean? You know, when you apply for a job, you have a resume. Mm -hmm. What does that resume say? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what does the resume do? What is it, what's the point of it? Shows your history. Shows your history. Mm -hmm. it, it, it reminds you that you're qualified. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I'm applying for a computer tech position, my resume, I've worked five years here, and I was the lead of this, and I was the tech of this, and da da da, and then I worked ten years here doing this, this, and this. It lays it all out for you. Yes. David had a resume mm -hmm. because when he was going through, he had to think back when he was a shepherd yes. over the sheep yes. in the low places, <clears throat> where when something tried to come up against his sheep. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That he protected them. Yeah. And he had the strength to kill a lion and a bear. Yeah, that's right. And like the Wizard of Oz says, oh my. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Because they questioned him when they, he said he was going to kill Goliath. They were like, whoa, you're just a boy. Uh, right. You know, you got high hopes, brother, but uh, <laughs> mm, I don't see that happening. And then they were like, well, if you're going to do it here, take all this extra stuff with you. He said, no. My resume has said, God has always been with me. Yeah. Yeah. My resume has said, if I can kill a lion and a bear for taking my sheep and, get, and, and, and save them from the lion and the bear's mouth, I can definitely kill this giant because God has always been with me. Yeah. Yes. God has always been with me. If he can protect you from that, if he can, um, you know, take you to different places and, 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 and in the space where we talk about honor here. He didn't just get honor, uh, um, respect for Saul when he was in that cave. It was already there. It was there when he had to go back and say, you know what? I know I'm at the palace and everything like that, but I still had a job to do back here, and I need to go back and feed the sheep. I need to tend to the sheep. Mm -hmm. And when his daddy said, go check on your brothers, he didn't say, I'm too good for that. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that submission was already there. Mm -hmm. That was part of his resume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And while he was out there, in the, uh, in the fields with the sheep, mm -hmm. he worshiped and praised God with that heart. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. So he already had it in him. God was just strengthening what he had in him right. for the activation of what's next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. So don't forget what God has put inside of you. Amen. Don't forget who he is to you and check your resume. Yes. So when the favor and anointing come, you can, oh, thank you, Lord, but you can also endure the troubles that will come with it. Amen. Amen. And it won't take you out and just say, you know what, forget all of this. Mm -hmm. You'll say, no, I can stand. I'll stand. It hurts, but I'll stand. I'm depressed, but I'll stand. I, I want to smack somebody, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to still stand. I'm going to stand on the word of God. Yes. I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm stand, and I'm going to honor him. Yes. Amen. And that's what I wanted to come with you today. Amen. And so let you know that no matter what blessings and favor and anointing you have on your life, the things will come, and it's going to throw you off because you're going to be like, I don't understand. I thought that was my friend. I thought that was my father. I thought that was my cousin. I thought we was buddies. I thought, you know, we were good. I thought we was in, I was in this together. Oh, you too? You against me too? Right. Mm -hmm. 
But God said, sometimes those things need to shed off of you anyway. Mm -hmm. Because I called you to hire. And so I'm just revealing what it is. I'm just showing you what it is. Because the truth be told, instead of Saul being jealous of David, he could have said, David, show me how. Right. Show me how. Right. How you worship, how you praise. I want to get back in alignment with God. Mm -hmm. Show me how you got that position. Mm -hmm. Show me how you were still able to stand in places and minister and people were hurt. Show me. Mm -hmm. Show me how you pray. Show me how you worship. Mm -hmm. I want to get back in good grace with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. He could have very well did that. But he didn't. And so even though there is a psychology of the anointing and favor, make sure that you're not on the other side of it where right. you're the one right. Right. looking at people. Right. Because we can. Because yeah. I look at, you know, the celebrities and things like that. I'm like, they doing everything out here. And I'm just trying to do the best I can, Lord. And they got millions and millions of dollars. And I'm, I'm just trying to get a couple, just a couple thousand just to help some people with their mind. Right. Right. That's not fair. And it may not be fair. But never take away the journey you have to get there because your journey is different. Yes. Right. And your end game is different. Yes. Yes. And God, the journey that you're on, you may question and things like that, but God is saying, I'm shaping you and molding you to your next. It may take you five, ten years. Yeah. It only took them one year. But when you get there, he said, what you're establishing what you're trying to do, the venture you're trying to do is going to take you further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be here. It's not going to be just a, a one hit wonder and then five years later it's gone. He said, I'm trying to establish a generation just yeah. like with David. I'm trying to establish a generation for you. My God. That even your sons worship me. Yeah. Yes. Even your son's sons worship me. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, I'm going to even use your DNA, in a sense, your lineage, mm -hmm. to bring forth the Savior. All right. Amen. Amen. So I just wanted to encourage you today. Thank you so much for having me.